I wish I could forget about all those horrible places. I'd rather have them as my own memories, and not this mix of feelings. My mental privacy has been compromised, and at the same time, I feel guilty as someone who regrets having stolen something precious from its rightful owner. Which was the fate of the Professor? What kind of punishment would make him pay for the suffering and the deaths of his countless victims? Felix Lundberg, Gothenburg, Sweden, 1954. Artist, sculptor. Connected to diverse missing persons by witnesses and relatives. Doorway's investigations detected that he was one of the last persons to interact with the victims. The case has been kept under wraps, given his social status. He is a renowned sculptor and a consultant for the Royal Swedish Academy of Fine Arts, the place where several missing people were last seen. of the sculptor is very complex. It has many layers, each one concealing the next. To discover them, one has to earn the trust of their owner and know which intimate mechanisms to trigger. The entrance to his lair was closed, but that was to be expected. He wouldn't let anyone into the refuge of his most secret thoughts and memories. The answer was hidden somewhere else. I still had to research all the clues that I was sure were waiting for me ahead. I had a faint suspicion about their nature. Deep inside, I was hoping to be wrong.
The sculptures in this place represent real people. Acquaintances of the sculptor, perhaps. What catches my attention is how his mind has warped their proportions and musculature in the interest of achieving the aesthetic ideal that he considers perfection. I understand that he wanted to imprint his style in his work, but that's not the case here. He feels like he could change the work of nature, improving it in every aspect. exactly why, until I remembered where I'd seen it. Its face was the same as one of the missing persons that I was ordered to search for while I was investigating this case. He was a man that was last seen with the sculptor in one of his occasional excursions out of his mansion. The body of the sculpture had a classical style that reached for perfection, but his face was silently screaming for help and looked at me begging for something that I would never understand completely. There was something about this statue that kept me on my toes. I couldn't understand exactly what. To me, the statues were nothing more than statues, and they couldn't hurt me. But for the sculptor, they were something else. The representation of strength, power, and beauty applied as punishment to any foreign enemy. That feeling was overwhelming and I slowly began to be afraid of the sculptures, but I couldn't take my eyes off them.
The deeper I got into the chambers of the sculptor, the more his cruel reality unfolded. Again, I was able to recognize one of his alleged victims. I had seen the face in one of the pictures sent along with his profile by doorways. He was an art model, disappeared from a nearby town. I watched it closely. This time, the whole body of the sculpture expressed horror. It was as if the sculptor wanted to capture his victim's panic, rejoicing in his power by doing so. Anyway, I had to acknowledge the fact that the quality of his technique was astonishing. The fidelity achieved while sculpting each muscle, vein, and wrinkle was perfect. How did he manage that level of realism? Was the victim his model or his mold? having felt the sensation of being closer to the truth. From here, I could finally manage to unlock the entrance to the sculptor's subconsciousness. I have been recollecting fragments of his memories during this journey. It's curious how our minds picture certain concepts in the form of tangible objects. It's something that, in spite of facing it regularly during my investigations, I still can't get used to. Every memory of the sculptor that I had in my power was part of the machine. Even while I couldn't read them directly, I may be able to use them to feed that poetical representation of his motives and instincts.
beginning to understand. Some of the statues were the representation of power, perfection, and strength, applied to the other type of sculptures that probably represented his victims. It was him crushing his ego against his models, forcing them to mold his works, die instantly, and become part of his art forever. I had discovered that those sculptures weren't simple exhibitions, and that I was in danger. I was indirectly represented by the victims, something that I immediately hated for the position it put me in. But I had to identify with them to survive. was governed by his rules, so I had to accept and try to survive at all costs. I had to make him pay for his crimes and avenge each of his victims, but I was closer to becoming one of them. His presence was imposing and intimidating, but the power of his own ego was so great that it would end up crumbling the pillars of his conscience. I exhaled a sigh of relief, knowing that I wasn't there when it happened. <laughs> 